The hand release plyometric push-up is a highly underrated movement for developing dead stop horizontal pushing power. To begin the movement, lower yourself down into the bottom position of a push-up and engage your upper back musculature by actively retracting your shoulders. This should cause your hands to lift a few inches from the ground. Maintain this upper back tightness at all times when in the bottom position. Initiate the push by forcefully driving your hands into the ground. First contact should be made with your fingertips rather than your palms. Your fingers will extend to allow your palms to make contact with the floor after a moment, but this extra buffer will go a long way towards keeping your wrist joints happy. It may help to visualize the actual push-up starting before your hands even touch the ground. By the time your hands make contact with the floor, you should already be nearing max power output. The goal is to transition seamlessly through this point of initial contact. Right as your hands make contact with the floor, you should also actively make your body as rigid as is possible. While you will eventually work up to contracting every muscle in your body simultaneously, initially it may be beneficial to focus on bracing your abs as if you were about to be punched and locking out your knees by contracting your quads. Keeping your body rigid will allow for max force production by preventing energy leaks. Continue driving your hands into the ground as hard as you can, all the way up past the point when your elbows are fully extended. The force generated should propel your upper body into the air and again, your hands will have left the ground. As gravity pulls you back downwards, again make initial contact with the ground by first reaching out with your fingertips so your fingers may act as shock absorbers. Try to decelerate the momentum evenly as you make your way back to the starting position. A quick side note. I recommend most trainees make soft contact with the ground before exerting max force. When this becomes comfortable on your wrist joints, moving to the knuckle version may be a good transition as your wrists will be neutral. The hand release plyometric push-up can be tailored to any experience level. If the plyometric version is too difficult, you may stop the rep as you would at the top of a normal push-up without your hands leaving the ground. Just be sure to do the reps as explosively as you can. For the more advanced trainee, you may increase the difficulty of the movement by starting with your hands nearer to your waist. In a sense, you will be turning the movement into a pseudo planche hand release plyometric push-up. As you become stronger and are capable of generating more and more power, your hands will move slowly closer to your waist. You may also try moving your hands upwards and away from your body, similar to a Lalane push-up. This should give you plenty of variation to work with. As this movement is working to develop power, sets of three reps are perfect. Three forceful reps will always be more effective than 10 reps performed with half effort. To understand why the hand release plyometric push-up is so effective, we first need to explain why obtaining more explosive power is so beneficial. For the strength athlete whose main goal is getting stronger, explosive power will allow you to skip over sticking points in a sense. Let's use the bench press as an example. If you've been benching for a while, you'll know there are certain points within the lift that always hold you back. Maybe you have the ability to press 300 pounds from the halfway point, but you can only get 250 pounds past your sticking point two inches off the chest. The sticking point acts as a bottleneck for the rest of the movement. From this point on, a large majority of your focus will be on strengthening this weak point. While trying to improve strength in this position is important, and you should continue to do this, there is somewhat of a workaround. If you become more explosive off the chest, for example, the momentum you generate may propel the bar past that sticking point, allowing you to bypass the bottleneck and press more weight. For a practical application of this concept, look no further than the Westside Barbell Gym. Westside Programming has an entire day devoted to developing explosive power known as the Dynamic Effort Day. They've even gone so far as to use added band tension to make use of overspeed eccentrics in order to cause an even greater stretch reflex rebounding effect. While the hand release plyometric push-up doesn't translate directly to this concept specifically because it develops dead stop or starting strength, which doesn't make use of the stretch shortening cycle like the standard eccentric first pause bench does, the same basic idea still applies. Becoming more explosive will allow you to lift more weight. For the bodybuilder who wants more muscle, let me offer you two main ideas to think about. Fiber type and getting more out of less weight. When discussing fiber type, you should know it's those high threshold type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers that really get you jacked. 
These are the fibers you may not tap into until the final two or three reps in a set of 10. You may have heard a bodybuilder saying something like, it's the last reps that count, or the set doesn't start till the muscles are already burning. The bodybuilder intuitively knows that tapping into those high threshold muscle fibers will build more muscle. Well, becoming more explosive may allow you to tap into those fibers earlier in a set. Consider the one rep max for a moment. When performing an all out as heavy as possible rep, those hard to reach fibers are recruited instantly. The body needs to make use of everything it has to keep itself safe. Well, on the topic of the bench press once again, consider your all out one rep maximum is 300 pounds. You could try to lift as near to that 300 for as many reps as you can in order to recruit those muscle fibers but this probably won't allow for enough volume to reach your desired outcome of more muscle. You can only perform so many reps near your max before your central nervous system becomes too fatigued. So rather than trying to lift 300 pounds over and over, you could make use of the idea of compensatory acceleration. If your max is 300, you're probably using roughly 210 pounds for your sets of 10. Well, rather than waiting until rep eight to tap into those large type two fibers, Compensatory acceleration may allow you to work those fibers from the start. The idea is this, if pressing 300 pounds makes use of all your muscle fibers at once, you could, in theory, tap into those muscle fibers early during your set of 10 by applying 300 pounds of force into that 210 pound bar. And this ties directly into the idea of getting more out of less weight. Perhaps what I should have said is getting more out of the same weight. If you do decide to use the compensatory acceleration idea, what you'll quickly notice is that you may not make it all the way to 10 reps. This really depends on the individual, but for many people, pushing the bar as fast as is possible may allow you to hit failure at say eight reps rather than 10. If it takes less weight to reach failure, you now have more room to grow and the recovery demand won't be as high, which in turn leads to you being able to do more overall volume, which leads to bigger muscles. As your explosive power ability improves, you will become more efficient at recruiting those high threshold fibers, which will make building muscle easier. And finally, when discussing the calisthenics athlete, you could say that for some movements, explosive power is everything. Consider the basic pull-up. If right now, at this moment, the highest point you can pull to is chin over bar, becoming more explosive will eventually lead to a waist to bar pull-up, which opens the door for many new training possibilities. If you can do waist to bar pull-ups, Imagine how easy the muscle up will become. And if we're talking muscle growth from calisthenics, unlocking the waist to bar pull up will have a cascading effect. Not only will the increased range of motion lead to more muscle stimulation, you now have another variation to add to your routine, which lessens the likelihood of overuse injuries and adds novelty to your program. Much of what I said in regards to building strength and bodybuilding applies here as well. But when it comes to calisthenics specifically, developing power leads to the greatest benefit of all, fun. The more explosive you become, the more skills you'll unlock, the more fun you'll have, and the more you'll wanna keep training. And finally, one last thing I'd like to add about the hand release plyometric push-up is in regards to muscle activation. Many people, myself included, don't get the best chest activation from the standard push-up. Our front delts or triceps tend to take over. Even with the run-of-the-mill plyometric or clap push-up, you might notice rep speed doesn't increase until you're halfway up and the triceps take over. The hand-release plyometric push-up allows for chest activation right from the start. By initiating the push before the hands make contact with the ground, momentum will already be underway by the time the chest comes into play and it will have no choice but to maximally contract as explosively as is possible. And there you have it. No matter your training goal, the hand release plyometric push-up would be a great addition to your program. If you decide to give it a try, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. I hope you liked the video and until next time, thanks for watching.